a sudden news really this morning and quite a loss I imagine for the OPEC organization. Yes, it really was sudden. I mean, um, as recently as yesterday, he was in Abuja, the capital of Nigeria, meeting the president there, Muhammadu Buhari. Um, and this does seem to have come um, out of the blue. We didn't know of um, any, any uh, illness that he had. And it will be very much a blow to OPEC and the wider oil community. He was coming uh, to the end of his six-year tenure. Um, he was really seen uh, as someone who was able to bring a diverse group of oil-producing nations together and help them communicate um, better I mean and he also was um, pretty integral to the formation of OPEC plus which mm. brought Russia and some other nations like Malaysia yeah. into the OPEC group Paul good morning as you mentioned there he was coming to the end of his six-year tenure at OPEC plus um, what and he was very integral to the formation of OPEC plus so what's the thinking about what the new secretary general will do especially given the the, the climate or the oil climate that we're in at the moment Hi, Mark. Well, the incoming Secretary General, uh, Kuwait, Haitham al Gais, has a pretty tough job on his hands. And the main reason for that is that OPEC is coming to the end of its, um, uh, let's say, uh, the end of its easing of output cuts that started at the um, start of the coronavirus pandemic. And there's a big question mark over what exactly the group's going to do from, let's say, beyond, from September onwards. Is it going to increase production to um, a major importers around the world, not least the, the, the US and the European Union, or is it going to struggle to do that? Um, many of its members have big supply problems uh, pretty much across the board, and it's only sort of, uh, the consensus is, is that it's only members like the, uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, the UAE that have much spare capacity. So the new Secretary General is going to have his work cut out um, handling what the group does next.